Hello friends, welcome to today's session on CUCM Automation. In this session, we will learn how AXL API request is sent. Then in the demo session, I will show you how AXL API request can be sent using the free Postman tool. During the demo, we will also learn about how we can send this request in a secured way. Although there is no prerequisite to this session, but before going into the details of AXL APIs, if you want to know the basics, you can check out my last video on getting started with AXL APIs. Also, if you are wondering why I showed AXL APIs via SOAP UI tool in my first video and why I am showing it via Postman tool in today's session, then let me tell you that this understanding will help us in doing the automation with Python which I am going to discuss in the next session. So stay tuned. So how AXL request is sent? At first, the client that is initiating the AXL API request completes the handshake with CUCM. After that, it completes a TSL handshake with the CUCM in which the CUCM presents the Tomcat certificate to the client for verification. All right. After that, the client can send HTTP GET or POST requests to the CUCM. Remember, for the purpose of AXL API, POST request is required. If you send GET request, the CUCM replies and uh, asks you to send the POST request for uh, AXL APIs. After this, in the initial response of CUCM, we can find two cookies that can be used for authorization of subsequent requests. This improves the performance of AXL API session as per Cisco. So this is a very brief introduction before we get into the demo session and I will explain in detail during our demo session about each of these steps. So now we will go to this website. This is postman.com slash downloads. From this URL, you can download the Postman app. But for the purpose of this video, I have kept this tool downloaded and installed. So this is how the Postman tool looks like once you start it for the first time. You can see this uh, plus icon here. You need to click here to generate new HTTP request. There are three key points in this interface. One is to select the method. AXL APIs work on HTTP POST method. Here are the headers of HTTP request. If the headers are not visible to you, you can click here to unhide the headers. Then another important part of an HTTP request is body part. This is where we write SOAP messages to send to the CUCM. One important header is authorization header. Here it is shown as a different tab. For uh, authorizing AXL API request, we can use the basic auth authorization header. When you open it for the first time, the username and password fields are empty. So I have cleared these fields now. Let us first send a GET request to CUCM. HTTPS colon backslash. So I'll use this URL. So the CUCM replies with an HTML document. For the purpose of this demo, we are interested in AXL requests. So let us put AXL in the address bar and send. So look what CUCM is telling us. It is saying the request is unauthorized. Now is the time 
to input username and password. All right, I've input the authorization username and password. Let's send again. Now, as you can see, we are getting a, a valid response from CUCM. 200, okay. Let's see what CUCM is telling us. AXL Web Services is working and accepting requests. Use HTTP POST to send a request. So, it is explicitly telling us not to use GET request for AXL, but use a POST request. An AXL request without any SOAP message in the body will throw an error. Let's see that error. It says 599 network connect timeout. So this, this is the error CUCM throws when we send empty request. We need to clearly write the SOAP message here uh, so that CUCM can reply. The best way to write the SOAP message is to use the SOAP UI tool about which I talked in my last video. So here I'm back to SOAP UI tool in the get CCM version request, I have this request one selected. So I'm going to copy the SOAP request directly from this tool and paste it in Postman. If you are not sure how to use SOAP UI tool with CUCM, I request you to view my first video getting started with AXL APIs. Now that I have copied the SOAP request message. This message is for getting CCM version. So this is the request that I'm going to send to the CUCM. Let's see the reply. As we can see, CUCM has replied with the correct version. Now we learned how to send SOAP request in the Postman tool and get a valid re reply from CUCM. Now, let us understand a few more things here. L look at this time. What does it tell? We didn't, it did not uh, do any DNS lookup, obviously, because we are using IP address. It completed the TCP handshake. It completed SSL handshake. And then the request message was transferred. And then the reply was downloaded. As of now, a session has been created with the CUCM, an HTTP session. And for the subsequent messages, this time is going to be less. Let's send this request again and see the time. All right, last time it was two seconds. This time, one second. It is still using TCF, TCP handshake and SSL handshake. This time, TCP handshake and SSL handshake was not required because the request was able to use, I should, I shall say, reuse the existing TCP session with the CUCM. Another thing to look at here is this error being displayed. What does it say? It says there is an error with the self-signed certificate. We are using HTTPS to send this request. That means secure transmission. Now, the certificate that CUCM is presenting during SSL handshake that it presented in previous request. Now, that is not recognized by Postman client. So it is saying that I don't trust that certificate. Now, these messages are not so secure, secure right now because the client is not trusting the server. How the request messages are accepted? You can see here, enable SSL certificate verification is switched off. Let's see what happens when I switch it on. Now, uh, the certificate will be validated. 
as you can see, we are getting SSL error because this Postman tool doesn't trust the certificates of CUCM, which has a self-signed certificate. We need to understand how to send secure communication to CUCM while doing automation. So let's resolve this error. We are going to log in to CUCM. Not here, but uh, Cisco Unified OS Administration or CM platform. Now I'll log into it. After logging, I'm going to go into security certificate management. I'm going to click find. What we are going to do to resolve this error is we will download Tomcat certificate from CUCM and upload it as a trusted certificate in Postman client. So let's find the Tomcat certificate. Here it is. All right. Download the PEM file. Just save it. I already have it downloaded. Tomcat 1 is the new PEM file. Now in the Postman tool, we'll go to File, Settings, Certificates, CA Certificate. The file should consist of one or more trusted certificates in PEM format. I'll switch it on. So when you'll do it for the first time, you won't see any PEM file here, uh, just how it is now. We need to click select file and uh, select the file from our PC. So I'm going to select the latest PM file that we downloaded from the server. Open it. And I believe that's it. Let us send the request once again. Hmm. All right. I forgot to rewrite the IP address as uh, FQDN. So this is the complete FQDN of uh, CUCM. Now let's hit send again. Wow, so this time it works. CUCM presents the version information and this communication is completely secured. Let us look at what ha what is happening now. So DNS lookup is happening now because we just use DNS. Then a new TCP handshake, SSL handshake successful. And then the regular message uh, request and the response download. Let us hit send once again. All right, now it is only 300 milliseconds. We are reusing the TCP session. We are not using DNS because uh, we already got the IP address in the DNS cache. SSL handshake is not required because we are reusing the same session and just sending the request and receiving the response. Now, there are a few more parts to authorization. As we saw, we need to input username and password for authorization. However, Cisco recommends for performance that we use cookies for subsequent request after the first request is authorized. So as we can see here, this is the response of CUCM and uh, CUCM is sending us two valuable cookies. We can reuse these cookies while sending our requests. And when we do that, we will not need username and password, but 
the postman tool is intelligent enough to use the cookies of, without explicitly telling it to use. So let us look at the headers. As you can see, the postman tool has added these cookies uh, that are sent by CUCM automatically in its request header. All right. The top part is the request part. The bottom is the a response from CUCM. So as we can see in the postman tool is automatically using the cookies from the first session. So how are cookies helpful? Let me show you. Just uh, resending the request a few times to make sure that the session is open. Now let's go to authorization header and i'm going to remove the username and password if you would remember when i first started this, uh, this request i did not have username and password and it threw an error let's see what happens now all right i'm getting a response even without sending a username and password why and how is this possible because we are reusing the same tcp session Let's check out the header section now. We are sending these cookies. All right, I'm clicking send to keep the session open so that we don't need username and password for authorization. So how the authorization is happening is via these cookies. Let me remove it. Oh, it doesn't give that access. Okay, we can't remove the cookies from here. We need to click here. There's a different tab for cookies. We have lots of cookies. Uh, can I delete it? All right. I can delete it like this. I deleted all the cookies. Now let's send the request once again. Look what we found. 401. What is it? 401 unauthorized, forbidden. Because we are neither sending username and password nor sending the cookies so friends this is simple for the very first request that i'm sending i need to use username and password and then what need to be done is cucm is sending cookies and we need to use these cookies for the next requests all right our postman tool is doing it by itself so now even if i remove the username and password and send the soap request message we are getting a valid response from cucm that's it guys for today's session i hope you enjoyed learning today and stay tuned in my next video i'm going to show you how to send these requests using Python.